please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, a very good morning. You're watching Trading Hour on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ekta Batra and uh, I will have my co-anchor Prashant Nair with us very soon. There is some positive news coming in from Cadilla Health where they have received an approval for a drug from their Mariah facility. Remember, it's been a long, long time now since the Mariah facility has been cleared from its regulatory issues. So it has been receiving approvals from the US FDA quite consistently. And now I think it is an approval for a kidney drug that they've received at this point in time. Remember, mark uh, numbers are today as well for Cadilla. So that stock is up around one odd percent. But nonetheless, for the markets as well, doing well, Nifty is up around half odd percent, mid cap index is up around one odd percent. So it's seems as though there's some amount of a comeback and pullback for the Nifty and the mid caps. Uh, the Nifty itself is currently above 10,550. A lot of stocks to discuss today. We have the likes of Sun Pharma, Tech Mahindra, as well as a couple of others such as Bank of Baroda, which are coming out with numbers separately. Uh, the likes of Cummins, which are reacting to numbers, and even MCX, which is up around 5 odd percent. Hi, Prashant. Ekta, hi. Uh, you know, so I think uh, no more commentary needed as far as markets go. Let's bring in Mitesh Thakkar of uh, MitesHThakkar.com who's, join, who's joining in for a quick technical check. Mitesh, good morning. Good to have you here. Your sense uh, of the screen, we are bouncing off a little bit. Can it continue? How high can we go? How far can we go, actually? <clears throat> good morning, Prashant. I think uh, this bounce back, which started yesterday afternoon, I think clearly with the bank leading has gained strength, the IT uh, index was anyways doing well. So in, on balance, I think, you know, on an uh, intraday basis, the charts kind of turned yesterday. I think the big test of uh, this bounce back will come around 10,620. And I'm still inclined to take or explore some shorting opportunities in case we fail to show strength or get past these levels of 10,620. So while on stock specific basis, I think we're trading with more of long bias, given the fact that a lot of stocks are reversing from uh, oversold levels. But I think on the index around 10,620 would want to reduce some long exposure and, and uh, even explore uh, shorting at uh, those levels with a stop just about 10,650. So what are the levels that you're expecting on the downside for the Nifty Mitesh? Uh, for example, what would be the range that we could expect at least? I, th I think, you know, after a big decline for the last about eight, nine sessions, uh, this bounce back should lead us to about 10,650 on the upside. And on the downside, I think 10,425 becomes the support area. So maybe we'll spend a couple of days consolidating in this 200, 220 point kind of range. All right. Um, stocks? Yeah. Should I cover my stock recommendations? Yes. Yeah, so I have two, uh, I have one buy and one sell call. Uh, in fact, IT stocks are doing very well and today some of the mid-cap IT names are joining the party again. NIT Tech has started moving up, so that's a buy with a stop at 1095. Uh, look for uh, targets of 1175 and Repco Home is a sell, uh, that's a sell with a stop at 570. Look for declines to about 520 kind of levels. All right, Mitesh, thanks very much. Appreciate you joining in uh, and uh, good speaking with you today. So those are uh, trades coming in from Mitesh. Uh, we have uh, Ashish uh, who's uh, joining in. Ashish uh, uh, Chaturmoha is head of uh, technicals and derivatives at Sanctum Wealth Management. Uh, good morning, Ashish. Thanks for being here. Uh, your, uh, I mean, brief thoughts on the market setup and your trades. Uh, good morning, Prashant. So, you know, uh, in last couple of trading sessions, we have seen some uh, downtick in the market. But in last two trading sessions, basically yesterday and today, we are observing a good amount of, you know, put writing happening at 10,500 uh, uh, put options. And if you look at the concentration of the puts, uh, it is maximum at around 10,500 levels. So I think some uh, sort of, you know, support is going to be there in the market at around 10,500 uh, levels. And at the same time, you know, around 10,700, 7,800, there's a, there's a good amount of uh, call writing happening so i think on upside 10700 720 is going to be capped at least in a shorter term so those who are looking for a short term trade ideally the strategy should be to initiate a long with a stop around 10520 uh, levels in nifty futures and upside 10690 to 10720 is a zone where one should look for booking some gains on on in, on index futures alongside uh, in terms of uh, specific trades uh, on stocks uh, ashish yeah so three? you know yeah 
Yeah, so, Prashant, if you look at, you know, the IT is clearly showing very strong uh, uptrend, whether it is, uh, you know, mid-cap IT or a large-cap names and uh, with, with, you know, with, with falling rupee, we are seeing a lot of buying interest in stocks like Infosys and Tata Alexi. So, I think Infosys, you know, this stock has seen a considerable amount of uh, open interest in a range between 1200 to 1230 and today we have seen a massive breakout on a five-month uh, uh, chart frame in, uh, on an Infosys. So, I think here we are going to see a strong amount of, uh, uh, you know, you know, short covering, which can extend this uh, rally towards 1280 to 1290 zone. So, Infosys is a buy with a stop below 1225, and upside 1280 to 1290 is a target we are expecting. Uh, Tata LXC in a mid cap, you know, uh, IT is looking very strong. It has given a good breakout on uh, weekly charts with uh, open interest addition to the tune of 8% in last uh, uh, three trading sessions. So, here uh, this is a buy with a stop below 1210, and an upside 1260, 1270 is a target uh, one can expect in Tata LXC. Uh, FMCG as a basket is showing very strong uh, positive strength and you know Dabur is one stock which is consolidating for last 10 trading sessions between 380 to 365 uh, as a consolidation range but in last three trading sessions we have seen open interest rising to the tune of 8% clearly on long accumulation and today we have seen a good breakout on daily charts about to 375 zone so keeping all that in mind I think 370 should be the stop loss for initiating uh, long in Dabur and we expect Dabur to cross its previous all time high and can target uh, somewhere around 400 odd levels and one more stock to add is Bajaj Finserve again a very strong open interest addition in today's trading session, uh, almost 4% rise in uh, OI addition in today's data and a clear breakout on all chart frames which clearly indicates a lot of long accumulation has happened and now there can be a good short covering rally which can extend towards 61.50 levels. So with a stop below 59.20, I think uh, Bajaj sure. Finserve is a good buy at current levels. Okay, all right, uh, Ashish, thank you much for that. In fact, uh, let's cut across to the Cummins conference call which is taking place right now. Remember, it was a weak set of numbers by the company. We certainly uh, feel more positive about the pathogen segment in, in this uh, coming year than uh, what we have felt uh, uh, and seen uh, in the last couple of years. So we do see a growth. Um, again, from a forecast perspective, you know, it's uh, something around the 7 to 8% growth for this year. Uh, industrial certainly will continue to have a, a stronger trajectory. Um, and then uh, DV will, you know, will, will be again between that uh, 9 to 10 percent growth. Okay. And my last question is, uh, can you just comment on uh, uh, the pricing behavior? Because we have seen that the margins continuously in the pressure for the last few quarters. And, uh, and same was uh, at the capital level and same was witnessed in Q4. So any price action that the company has seen uh, or uh, are you feeling the pressure of the higher uh, commodity prices or special steel uh, which are not able to power in the, to the customers? Yes, Deepak, I think uh, it, it correctly are, uh, we have seen the pressure of uh, commodity price increase. Uh, we certainly have not been uh, able to pass, uh, pass that on to the market. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, we continuously look at uh, you know new products, uh, introduction of new products that can help us improve our margin position. Uh, we also look at ag, you know especially on the industrial side, we are trying to work on uh, seeing how to increase the value proposition to the customer in terms of uh, the entire system solutions, etc., which do tend to get us better margin. And of course, as we see an improved uh, you know aftermarket. Uh, uh, participation that always helps us uh, increase our margins. Well, okay, so I'll join back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so at least the domestic guidance in terms of revenue seems to be quite steady for them in FI19, optimistic at around 8 to 10 odd percent in terms of growth for the company. That's at least what they are envisaging at this point in time. Remember, domestic revenue growth had, de de domestic revenue rather, had declined by around 5 percent on a year on year basis in Q4. So that's uh, basically the guidance coming in and exports expected to remain flat in FI19. But we do have another company uh, joining in now. Uh, JMC Projects uh, reported numbers, and we have Manoj Tulsian. He's the whole-time director at, uh, and CEO of JMC, who's with us uh, on the phone line. Uh, so the uh, revenues uh, have uh, grown. Uh, 
the profits look uh, uh, this is substantial growth actually. I mean, 25 crores last quarter, 34 crores this quarter, and if you look at the year-on-year -year comparison, it is even better. Uh, Mr. Tulsan, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, could you first of all take us through uh, the segment-wise? Uh, where did the maximum thrust come from? Uh, you know, was it uh, has the real estate business picked up? Uh, good morning. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, if you see the thrust, uh, you know, we are majorly a, a factories and buildings player. Mm. The majority of our revenue uh, continues to come from the building segment. Though the building segment still has not picked up to that extent. But uh, since we work with the best of the developers in the country, somewhere uh, we have been able to see positive growth in that sector. At the same time, we also have uh, infra as another pocket, and uh, infra has done well. Comparatively between the two sectors, infra has grown better compared to the building sector during the year. You mean uh, infra factories, essentially? Uh, that's what you're referring to? No, infrastructure, when we say, we, we talk about, uh, you know, our segment which comprises of uh, road, flyovers, okay, 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 and okay. water projects. So that's done well. Uh, then that, when most companies are uh, doing well because of that. But factories, uh, what's been the update? Well, not much of work uh, on that front. But uh, we recently got one order uh, from one of the uh, large-size steel uh, manufacturer in the country. Hmm. And we are seeing that that segment is now opening up. So going forward, we see a lot of opportunities. And that is a segment which actually is uh, better profitable also, highly profitable. So those are, I think, good news for us in terms of, you know, that we are seeing the industrialization getting opened up going forward. Hmm. I think the street is quite enthused with your margin performance, uh, Manoj. I think this quarter was the highest ever margins that you've done at 11 odd percent. Yes, Ekta. Uh, I think this is the highest margin which we would have uh, done. So, what are you guiding for FI19? Uh, last four years, if you will see, continuously uh, we have been able to improve our margins. And now we have crossed 10%. Uh, so, between previous year and this year, there is almost a jump of around 120 basis points. Whereas uh, uh, our guidance was slightly more conservative, we were thinking of that, you know, this will improve by around 50 to 60 basis points. So uh, that's good. And we continue to work on margin improvement. And this is because of one reason where, you know, we have worked very hard in improving our uh, systems and processes and the control on the overall business hmm. in the last three to four years. So we still expect that this year, uh, you know, our margin should further improve by around 50 basis points. Okay. Uh, in terms of revenue as a whole, you missed your guidance by, I think, around 200 basis points for FI18. Uh, do you have the confidence to guide the market in terms of what you could probably expect for FI19 based on what you're seeing? So, Ekta, uh, let me first speak about the last year guidance. We initially started with a 15% guidance, and then we uh, uh, changed the guidance to 20%. But that was on a like-to-like -like basis, including okay. the GST impact. So this 18% uh, you know, actual growth, which is visible, is because the previous year, the base figure had a GST amount or, or the service tax and VAT amount included. And if we add that up, then uh, actual growth for the year on a like-to-like -like basis is around 23%. Uh, this 50 basis point improvement in margins in 19 over 18 that you're saying, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, cost of funds is going up, right? Uh, so that will surely have an impact. I mean, are you accounting for what you would be borrowing at, at I mean, previous levels or are you uh, sort of building in some increase there as well? Marginal increase. In fact, uh, previous year also we have been able to reduce our cost of borrowings and uh, I see a marginal impact of that. At the same time, we have been able to control our working capital well. So I think, uh, you know, uh, with another growth of 15% plus, which we are looking at for FY19, we would be able to uh, manage within the existing working capital with a slight increase which may happen on the interest rate front. Hmm. Not any major impact. Okay. Your total order book stands at 7,000 crores off? Yes. So March end, we were at around 7,600 crores and then we declared uh, in April another order of around 950 crores. Hmm. So uh, you may say that, you know, we are at around 8,500 uh, odd crores. 
this 900 crores is the steel order that you're talking about from a, uh, no these, okay. these were all uh, elevated corridors three oh, orders uh, they were all of uh, flyovers okay all right Thanks very much. Uh, appreciate you joining in, Mr. Tulsi, and thank you, uh, thank you for uh, taking us through the numbers and giving us some outlook uh, there. I mean, we should actually quickly uh, look at the stock ones before we uh, take a quick break. The stock's uh, flat, 662, 663. So now 60 points, 62 points, 10,575 is where uh, the Nifty is trading at. The Sensex is up about uh, almost 200 points. Manisha is now uh, with us here to run us through what's happening in the world of commodities, Manisha. What's top of mind? Thank you so much for that, Prashant. That is crude because it's a third straight in the crude oil prices right now. And we have faced very stiff resistance at $80 per barrel. The prices did go at that and beyond that as well. But the net long record positions that the investors have been holding have continued to be lightened in last six or seven weeks. We actually are 10% down from all-time highs in sense of long positions. And not just that, uh, there are fresh shots accumulating now at, at around $80. So there is a decline coming in and it does seem support by the fundamentals as well. One, of course, is about Russia warning of a gradual uh, production increase. Remember, Russia has been uh, withholding supply with OPEC since January 2017. And now with some supply concerns coming in from many OPEC members, it is uh, the voice that you hear from OPEC and Russia as well that they could be changing their strategy on 22nd of June. In any case, uh, the kind of uh, sanctions on Iran that are being talked about is quite different from what we saw in really. So it really is not the same world when we saw the crude oil prices jump up at $100 and beyond. At this point in time, we are looking at very high petrol and uh, gas prices in many countries, including India, even as the crude oil prices are trading just about at $80 per barrel. Another important thing to note really is that you are looking at the Brent crude prices holding around 78 and the U.S. is holding at 71. So the $7 of a premium that the Brent is commanding over WT, something that is expected to lead to some profit taking quite sharply actually in case of the Brent prices. So that's, that's the screen in front of you where we have seen sharp declines coming in. The U.S. also production is holding around 10.73. U.S. is now the second biggest producer in the world only after Russia where the production stands at 11 million barrels per day. So of course, clearly, some uh, bit of a bearish sentiments coming into the market, whether it is supplies or the statements from the big producers, and that seems to be weighing onto the prices. Aurobindo Gai now joins us for the strategies for the last day of the week. Aurobindo, hi. What is your sense? We have seen prices come off 4,800 as well. Where do you see a support or a downside target now coming in? Okay, I think right, yeah. Yeah, we just need it to be reconnected. Uh, so we'll get those commodity strategies in just a bit. But um, Manisha, I mentioned you, I heard you mention that it is just uh, the last trading day in terms <laughs> of strategies. <laughs> not so yet, yes, <laughs> Not as yet, not as yet, long day. But any views in terms of the kind of gains that MCX is seeing? Well, you know, there is still no confirmation really from either NSC or MCX as well. We, of course, have seen a lot of off-record comments coming in from the sources there. But uh, clearly, we did see MCX gain up by 7% as the trade started and seems to be gaining furthermore on those kind of levels. Uh, I, I don't know how much to say really. Uh, mm. The exchanges haven't denied the news, but they haven't confirmed it as well. What we understand is that yes, there is a talk of mergers, and what we do understand from uh, not verified sources also is that if the merger happens, it would be a takeover of business and not exactly of of the assets there. Okay. Also, the most important is that uh, again something that we are hearing again mm. that uh, Kotak being one of the larger uh, shareholders in MCX. Uh, that's where perhaps the talks could have animated from because to Kotak has been looking to sell this for some time in want mm. of a better valuation perhaps. Mm. So that is uh, where perhaps we could have seen those uh, talks really start. But as I said, we still are awaiting confirmations on various levels on uh, on, on what really could happen on sense of MCX. But clearly the stock is buzzing on at it no something better, 9% up as we speak on to that exchange. But Aurobindo Gayan, I hope, is back again. And Aurobindo, what is your sense now on the crude oil prices? Are you selling at these levels or is it a good accumulation level now? 
Uh, well, I think uh, we have to accept the fact that it has failed to break $80 uh, for Brent or per se $73 convincingly on the WTI. So we are seeing a bit of minor price correction now for temporarily. So I, uh, I think looking at the market trend, we should go for intraday kind of uh, trend to go short on crude oil. So I think uh, we'll see another uh, a dollar or maybe more than one and a half dollars kind of fall could be seen on the oil prices. So translating that to Indian market, I think uh, we can expect uh, some more correction in oil prices. So the trade will be going short on 4870, and we can have a target uh, maybe of around 100 rupees towards 4780 level, just opposite 4925. So I think uh, on an intraday perspective, I'll continue to hold a bearish core on Kula. Well, absolutely. That's the kind of statements we have been hearing from BP and Bank of America, Merrill Lynch as well, that perhaps a near-term top has been done unless you see another uh, more disrupting news come in for the crude oil prices. We perhaps are headed a couple of dollars down from here as well. But Aurobindo, how are you looking at the metal prices? Because today seems like a very bearish day for this one. Uh, almost everything in the metals is trading in the red. The US dollar, of course, has strengthened and uh, U.S., of course, has said that any deal that needs to happen with China will be of a different structure altogether. Is that what you think is bothering the space? I think uh, we had seen good amount of relief rally yesterday and uh, uh, currently we are seeing a bit of correction with the dollar rising a bit. Mm. So I think uh, buying on dips would be the right strategy for a few of the base metals like nickel, especially I would say because it's been rallying for the last couple of uh, trading sessions. So I think nickel seems to be a little better to buying on dips around 1,000 rupees at the Indian market and we can have a temporary target of 20 rupees around. So 1,020 should be the target and 990 should be the total. So among the base metals, I think nickel seems to be better buying than the any other com metals uh, in the complex. Okay. Uh, Manisha, thanks very much. Uh,